Uh, I just think the classroom is one of the most exciting places one can be. Um, there is a level of, gosh, I don't even know what other word to use, where students are involved, you never know what's going to happen next, and it's a chance to interact with some young people who are ready to launch their lives. Uh, my school is located in Long Beach, California. I teach at Long Beach Polytechnic High, and we have approximately 4,500 students on the main campus and a satellite campus with another 500 students about two blocks away. Um, I have 185 students, 37 at a time, five different times, only we're actually on what's called a block schedule, so I see students every other day. To see different students. I do see students every day. A typical day would be I start off with students for approximately 95 minutes with 37 students. They leave, we take a 10 minute break, another 37 students come. They leave, we have a lunch break, um, and then another 37 students would come. Every other day, instead of having a third set of 37 students, I am given a conference period. I teach American government and economics and have an elective on criminal and civil law. My students are seniors, and probably my overall goal is for them to have an understanding of the American system of government and to encourage them to become active participants in democracy. On a scale of 1 to 10, with, a one, with 10 being the highest, uh, 1. They need it to graduate, and beyond that, there's not a lot of interest. They've watched C-SPAN, and they think government's boring. Uh, occasionally, I've had students whose uh, parents have run for office. A lot of the students I see are part of the immigrant community. Long Beach houses the largest Cambodian community outside of Cambodia. Student body is approximately 30% African American, 30% Asian, 20% Hispanic, I think it's about 10% Caucasian, and then there's some Pacific Islanders, and I'm not sure what else that makes up the rest. They get along phenomenally well, yes. Well, first of all, they're on my side because I stand between them and graduation. They do care, very much they care about graduation, and the majority of them are planning to go on to college, and high school graduation is incredibly important to them. Um, secondly, I have to convince them that these are subjects worth talking about, so I try to get them to buy in. I have an incredibly supportive principal and uh, generally the administration, so we start on the school level of school rules they don't like, things they want to change, and this principal is, um, incredibly open and willing to come to the classroom and talk about um, why things are the way they are. For instance, in the fall this year, we have something called international ambassadors rather than having a homecoming court. Um, the story go behind it goes back to 19, I believe it was 70, there was a riot and some people thought it was in part because of race, because the court was primarily white and the school decided, you know, we need to do something a little bit different. And so they decided every ethnicity would be represented by international ambassadors. It's been so long, most of the students don't know why we have it, and some of them wanted to go back to the traditional homecoming court and didn't understand why they couldn't. Um, I called the principal and he came and chatted with them about it and how it could be changed if that was what they truly wanted. Yeah, they, um, we have a textbook, and in fact, California requires that every student have a textbook that they can take home. Our school was a part of a recent uh, law settlement, case didn't actually go to court, called the Williams Settlement, that said in large urban schools and poor districts, every student must be afforded a textbook, a recent textbook. Um, I have them, I teach them how to take notes in a textbook and grade that as homework, have quizzes, all the time-honored ways that uh, teachers make students do it. They, no, they do not. They return the books at the end of the semester. It is approved by the state of California and it is used for approximately seven or eight years. Fairbanks, Alaska. I grew up in Long Beach, California. 
and I went to school, my undergraduate, at University of California, Santa Cruz, um, received a bachelor's degree in economics, and moved to the Bay Area to work as an economist. Um, was living in Berkeley, working in San Francisco, having a great time. 22 years old, 21, 22, and all of a sudden thought, I have settled down. I am starting to put roots down, and thought I was far too young to do that. So I called a friend from college who was in Los Angeles struggling to find a job, and we agreed that we would leave California. Um, Fairbanks, Alaska turned out to be the destination. Being a good student of economics, got there, saw there was not much of a market for economists, but the construction industry was booming. So that's where I went. There was an uh, opening. Um, and at that time, they were trying to get more women into the construction industry, so the federal government was willing to pay half my wage if an employer was willing to train me, and there was an employer who, at that, figured it was worth a try. So I started out in the office and worked Saturdays in the field and then convinced them that that's where I wanted to be full-time. Who about uh, 10, 12 years? I am a, yes, I have my journey card in plumbing. Uh, it was challenging for me, a lot of fun, weren't many women in the field. Met my husband, who was actually the master plumber who taught me how to be a plumber. Uh, we started our own plumbing company, and Fairbanks, Alaska was a fabulous town to be young and uh, start your own business. People took you seriously, and uh, it was a great experience. We married in, did we? Yes, we married in Alaska. Oof, whenever the Challenger crashed, it was a while ago. Um, I was about 30 years old. Our business was incredibly successful. There were a lot of people who were urging us to become larger, to hire full-time employees. I didn't think I really wanted to do that, nor did he. Um, and I started to wonder if I really wanted to do this for the rest of my life. Construction is very difficult on the body. And at 30, I realized this won't be fun at 40. So I started thinking about another career. Uh, sold myself on teaching and sold my husband as well. Went for my teaching credential at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Did my student teaching in Fairbanks, Alaska. And as I completed it, they laid off uh, 150 teachers. My husband also, we went back together. He also, he had a bachelor's degree from the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor, so he went through the teaching credential program with me. We student taught at the same high school in Fairbanks, Alaska. When they laid off all the teachers, we thought maybe it was time to find another place to live, and we debated where that would be. And we were choosing between the West Coast and Michigan, and um, finally decided Long Beach, California would be a good starting point. Um, they are, but not the way they used to be. First of all, there's a lot more history to learn and not a lot more time dedicated to it, so that makes it tough. And secondly, we are on, uh, at least in the public schools, um, a huge testing binge. Um, I believe the idea is that they want to assess, they want accountability, and have decided the best way to do it is to test. It also has to do with the No Child Left Behind Act, which requires that states test periodically. Um, I think that it was a good idea that they've gone about all wrong, um, that one test can tell you how students are doing. I think any time you just use one instrument on a given day that is largely multiple choice, you run the risk of leaving a lot of what learning is really all about out. Additionally, it seems to be used to decide whether or not a teacher is qualified. And while I feel I do a great job with my students, if a student doesn't perform, I don't think that necessarily reflects whether or not I'm qualified. I certainly know the material. Whew. Um, a couple percent? Pretty, uh, no, it's gone down some. As a teacher's reputation gets established, students will either perform or avoid said teacher. In a limited sense, yes. For the most part, no. They're assigned via what are called academies, which is a way to try to make the school smaller. 
but they certainly or a parent can call and ask not to have a particular teacher or to have some other teacher. Um, Cambodian, Vietnamese, Thai, Laotian, a lot of Pacific Islanders. Um, so we have Samoans. Gosh, I hate to be thinking that I'm leaving somebody out. They, um, in the U.S. history classes, they get very excited when learning, learning about the Vietnam War. A lot of their parents will not talk about that area. Um, Pol Pot and the regime is something else that when they get to do independent research, it's what they want to know. And this year in Long Beach, we had an event. Um, the Long Beach community wanted to honor the Cambodians and chose to have a parade, which the Cambodian community had been urging them to do. Unfortunately, their choice of day was the day uh, that commemorated Pol Pot killing a number of people. And so the Cambodian community became very divided. Some who thought it was more important that the parade go on as a means of acceptance, and others who said, but you cannot have it on this day. And um, the students loved that there were meetings at city council and different groups doing different things, and students on both sides of the issue. The parade did go on, but they changed the date. I think for a lot of mine, it is probably more economic freedom, but in order to become a citizen, one has to pass a test if not born here. And so because there is a compelling need for citizenship, um, a lot of them want to learn the history for that reason. Again, going back to the Cambodian community, students who are not citizens, if they commit crimes, can be deported. A lot of these students, they're residents, they're not citizens, they don't know their uh, homeland whatsoever and have had older brothers or sisters who are deported, so they want to become citizens. Absolutely. We prefer not to know. We don't um, collect that kind of data. If a student proves that he or she lives in the area that we serve, then they are allowed to go to the school. That's the public schools. No, actually, I believe California passed such a law and it was thrown out by the courts, and right now we have no obligation to tell anyone in terms of legality or illegality. I have students who will admit to me that their family did not come here legally, and we've sometimes tried to enlist our congresspeople to help them out in terms of amnesty or anything else. The, the heartbreaker is when students are applying to college, mm -hmm. and those who are here illegally do not have the resources to go on to college, and that's the stopping point. Um, I believe there's an act in Congress, I don't think it's passed yet, the DREAM Act, which is supposed to take care of students in that position. I could pretty much say I would not teach in a private school. I believe in the public schools. I think they're a great egalitarian place, um, and I think we've got to do everything we can to help them survive. Occasionally, mm -hmm, usually through competitions, things like of, of that nature, we would come into it. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I think, I think options are a great thing for everyone, but if you want a child to really get an idea of what the country's all about, what better place than to see students from every socioeconomic background imaginable? And I, think, I, I can't imagine trading that in for anything. I would like to make, um, wow, a lot of changes. First of all, our public high schools are seriously underfunded. Um, the classrooms that the students in don't look cared for. The school that I'm at is over 100 years old. We don't have air conditioning. The heat is either on or off. We don't control the eat, heat. The paint is peeling. Um, I think we put more money in the prison. So first of all, simply the infrastructure. Finding computers is difficult. I would love it if my students had more access to technology. Secondly, the class load for teachers is horrendous. And um, I would delight in having the number of students that I see. Um, I'm satisfied with my salary, but I didn't go into teaching to get rich. However, if one looks at the amount of education most teachers have and the things they could be doing instead of teaching were seriously underpaid. It's tough. Um, try to generate enthusiasm to care about the subject, um, convince them that I think this is one of the most important things to study. Occasionally, uh, yeah.
Yeah, everybody is accountable in my classroom. Probably the um, thing that I found the most amazing with that many students is students seem to think it's okay to sleep in a classroom, and I will not allow that. If a student puts his or her head on the desk, I will walk over and ask if they need to go see the nurse because a uh, healthy teenager should not be sleeping during the day. And usually the answer is, no, no, I'm fine, and then they'll get back and engaged. They know that I will call upon them, especially if I don't think that they're paying attention. They will get a chance to make decisions, to work in groups with other students in the class, and they know that there will be tests that hold them accountable for the information they're learning. Uh, calling on a student without giving him or her any warning, just putting them on the spot, embarrassing them, or telling them that their answer is flat out wrong. No, I generally don't. I will tell them after an election how I voted. Beyond that, um, I try to keep it out of the classroom for the most part. Because I think it's too easy for students and their parents to be dismissive, um, much as you suggested, with a audience that was watching to say, oh, well, she thinks that because of whatever, and therefore I think I lose some credibility. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I feel I'm successful when they're all convinced I voted the way they would. A lot of them turn 18 during their senior year, and in fact, I make a point of giving them a gift, and one of the gifts is a register to vote form, um, the kind that already has the, um, they don't need to put a stamp on it, so it's a pretty big deal. Um, in November elections, very few are actually able to vote. When we have um, primaries or anything in California, we love initiatives and we love special elections, so a lot of times they are able to vote during their senior year. If you include the community colleges, probably 70 to 80 percent. I think we're a little bit higher. Um, my particular school has a magnet program that attracts, it's a, for the gifted and talented, it's a gate program. So we get um, a great number of students. All of those students will go to college and I think it trickles down that the, the school has an atmosphere where very much college is on the agenda. Absolutely, a lot of them work anywhere between 20 to 30 to 40 hours a week. Uh, a lot of them start out in the fast food industry. Um, some of them service industry. Some of them work for their parents economic necessity. It's a strata from the very lowest to probably the upper 10 percent of the economic um, strata in, at least in that community, pretty wealthy. I think they've gotten busier. I think there are so many demands on their time. Um, right now we also, I think it's more difficult for them to get to college, to pay for college, and I think they're very, very concerned about the future, more so than they used to be. Um, particularly in California, the chances, they don't see the possibility of owning their own homes because real estate has just gone completely um, up in the stratosphere. And for a middle-class individual, it would be very difficult to own a home, so they're not sure what's going to happen. I don't see them any better prepared, and in the public schools we've gone to a smaller class size in K through three, where they have 20 to one. I don't really see a difference that way, but I think they're more sophisticated. They're certainly more hardwired for the latest technology. Um, they're pretty attuned to current events, but I don't know that I would say that they're any better prepared, really. I would agree that students do not read newspapers. I don't know that they ever did in large numbers, but I think it's much smaller now. Um, they also don't necessarily watch the news. I think Sarah's absolutely right. They get their information online, and the scary part is if they read it on the computer, it must be true. Um, yeah, I sometimes try to steer them to sites that I think would be reasonable. More importantly, I try to give them ways in to figure out when they can trust a source and when they can't. I think their favorite place on a computer is um, myspace.com where they all communicate with one another and have their own web pages. Yeah, I had a few other jobs before becoming a teacher. No, I don't regret it in the least. I think it's a, I think it's a fabulous occupation and um, one can definitely find happiness in the classroom. The best part about it is that I get to choose every day what it is that we're going to do and learn.